Welcome to a lesson on homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equations or homogeneous equidimensional equations. The objective of this video is to understand the process for solving a Cauchy-Euler differential equation. Normally differential equations with variable coefficients are more difficult to solve. However, a Cauchy-Euler equation or equidimensional equation is an exception which we'll see in this video. So a differential equation that fits this form here is a Cauchy-Euler equation, and the key thing to notice is that for each term, the degree of the coefficient is equal to the order of the derivative. So if we look at this first term, notice how the degree of the coefficient is n, and we also have the nth derivative. Looking at the second term, notice how the degree of the coefficient is n minus one, and we have the n minus one derivative. So for each term on the left side of this equation, the degree of the coefficient is equal to the order of the derivative. And then if g of x is zero, we have a homogeneous differential equation, and if g of x doesn't equal zero, we have a non-homogeneous differential equation. Of course, we could also express the form of a Cauchy-Euler equation as we see in this form here. Now let's begin by considering a homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation in this form here, and we'll assume x does not equal zero. So what we'll do is begin by considering a solution in the form of y equals x raised to the power of m, and now we'll find the first and second derivatives, and then perform substitution into equation one. So if y equals x raised to the power of m, then applying the power rule, y prime would be equal to m times x raised to the power of m minus one, and y double prime would be equal to m times the quantity m minus one times x raised to the power of m minus two. So now we'll take y and its first and second derivative and perform substitution into equation one. So again, at the top is the important information from the previous slide, and now we're going to perform substitution for y double prime, y prime, and y. So looking at this equation here, notice how here's y double prime, here's y prime, and here's y. Now if we take a look at this first product here, notice how we have x to the second times x to the power of m minus two, and since the bases are the same, we would add the exponents, giving us just x raised to the power of m, as we see here. Looking at the second term, notice how we have x to the first times x to the power of m minus one, which would also give us x to the m, and notice that the third term also contains x to the m. So for this third equation, we're going to factor out x to the m from each term. So notice if we factor out x to the m, we'd be left with am times the quantity m minus one plus bm plus c equals zero. So the key thing to notice here is that this equation is going to equal zero when this quantity here would be equal to zero. So it follows that x raised to the power of m is a solution to equation one if m is a solution to what we're going to call the auxiliary equation. And this is very similar to the characteristic equation when we were solving differential equations with constant coefficients. So the auxiliary equation can be expressed here, as we can see from this third equation here, or we could distribute a to the m and rearrange the terms and express the auxiliary equation in this form here. So depending on the text, you may see it expressed either way. So what this means is we can use this auxiliary equation to help solve Cauchy-Euler equations. So just like when solving homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, there are three cases to consider based upon the nature of the solutions to the auxiliary equation. The nature of the solutions will affect the form of the general solution. So let's consider those three cases. When solving the auxiliary equation of a second order homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation, if the solutions m sub one and m sub two are two distinct real roots, then the general solution will be in this form here, given by y of x. But if m sub one equals m sub two, or we have two real equal roots, then the general solution will be in this form here. Notice how the second term 
has an extra factor of natural log x. And then finally, if m sub one and m sub two are complex roots to the auxiliary equation in the form of alpha plus or minus beta i, then the general solution will take on this form here. Now I do want to mention that if we have a second order non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equation, then this would give us the complementary function and then we could use the method of variation of parameters to find a particular solution and then form the general solution. So in the next several videos, we'll take a look at solving second order homogeneous and non-homogeneous Cauchy-Euler equations. I hope you found this introduction helpful.